in the late 70s to make sure no car's gas tank would explode like the Ford Pintos did, NHTSA began requiring a rear impact crash test. It said that all cars in the United States had to have gas tanks which would remain intact in rear crashes of 30 miles an hour. Well, NHTSA solved the gas tank problem, but those tests revealed something no one really knew. Every major American and Japanese car maker had seat backs which failed in rear crashes of 30 miles an hour. Here's the videotape from the government's gas tank test for a car like the one Mrs. Hernandez was driving. Watch what happens to the heads of the dummies. In crash tests of 30 and 35 miles an hour, the seat bends back, often to the rear seat cushion, putting the heads and spines of the people in the front seat in danger. Also, because the shoulder harnesses are anchored on the frame of the car, the passenger's upper body is unrestrained when the seat back flattens away from the harnesses. But every one of these seat backs meets and most even exceed the federal standard for seat back strength. So, are they safe enough? No. And they're not because it's a federal safety standard that's totally inadequate. Joan Claybrook should know. She was the head of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration under Jimmy Carter. Claybrook is now president of Ralph Nader's group, Public Citizen. The federal safety standard was issued in 1967, and uh, it was based on an industry standard that was older than that, and it's never been upgraded. And since 1978, the government has known that seat backs will fail if a car is hit from the rear right. under 30 miles an hour, right. and they've done nothing about it? Right. That's right. Uh, we saw the seat back failures, the notations were made, and that was one of our next tasks, was to start a rulemaking to deal with seat back failure and to strengthen the seats. But the Reagan administration came in and stopped our rulemaking, and nothing's happened since then. Currently, the federal standard requires that a seat withstand a force 20 times its own weight. Two years ago, Dr. Suchowski petitioned the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration to improve the seatback standard. He says NHTSA forgot to take into account one critical element, a person sitting in the seat. It's an inadequate standard. It's uh, flawed as far as I'm concerned. According to Dr. Suchowski, none of the Japanese or American car makers make seats which are strong enough. But Mercedes-Benz does. Mercedes-Benz tests with the weight of a person in the seat. Why? to simulate what's happening in the real world. Tom Beloga is manager of safety engineering for Mercedes-Benz. He says there are three places where seats fail. Three points would be here at the connection between the seat back and the cushion frame. This is where it pivots right here. The second point would be here at the seat track connection where the seat slides fore and aft. And then the third critical point would be where the seat fastens to the floor. So Mercedes engineers make these areas particularly strong. Uh, you can notice here that the metal gets wider to add stiffness and rigidity to the seat back. Uh, also, this section of the seat frame is formed like an I-beam for rigidity, uh, not only to resist bending rearward, but also for torsional rigidity against twisting. If in a, in a rear crash of, of 30 miles an hour, if that seat went down flat, would Mercedes consider that to be a failure? We would not build a seat that would collapse in that mode. We would consider such a failure in our test to be unacceptable. Ford, General Motors, Chrysler all say their current seat systems provide, as Ford says, excellent protection in rear impacts, that their seats give way in an energy-absorbing manner so people don't get hurt. However, GM apparently has known for years that people could be seriously injured if a seat back collapsed in a crash. Back in 1968, a General Motors engineer wrote a memo which was read in court at Bob Oak's trial. The memo says, a potential hazard can exist from the occupant's head being forced into the rear seat cushion after he has slid up the front seat with possible damage to the spine. Another is loss of control of the vehicle because the occupant is in the horizontal position so he can no longer reach the vehicle controls. This circumstance might lead to causing a second and otherwise avoidable accident. That memo was written by Thomas Ruster of General Motors. Charles Reed asked the GM engineer about his memo at the trial. We called Mr. Ruster, who was still employed with General Motors, 
as a witness, and we asked him whether he agreed, he still agreed, with those findings that he made in 1968. He said yes. They say that, you know, you really don't have a lot of crashes of this type, so that you don't have enough to justify the amount of money it would take to fix the seat so it would withstand uh, that kind of impact side impacts and front impacts are more important and that's where you need to put your safety dollars. It is true that there are less crashes in the rear and less injuries and deaths in the rear than in front and in side impact crashes but that doesn't mean that uh, that you shouldn't do what you can do and the cost of this is so tiny. It, let's say that the cost is um, twenty dollars or fifty dollars even a hundred dollars. Don't you think that anybody who knew that even if it cost that much, which I can't believe it would, uh, to, to upgrade the car so that you wouldn't uh, become a quadriplegic, that they'd be willing to pay that? We asked every major American and Japanese automobile manufacturer for an interview about their seats. We wanted to know why they don't spend the money to strengthen them. They all declined our request. Even the industry's lobbying organization wouldn't talk to us. Yeah, as someone who just said, I think I'll go buy a car, and I went and bought a car, and I was rear-ended at 30, 35 miles an hour, and the seat back, and seat back broke, and the car company says, well, it's kind of to be expected. We complied with the standards. That's ludicrous. Their own people said, these seats aren't safe. Somewhere up the line, someone should have said, mm, wait a minute, why don't we try to fix this? The agency charged with making sure cars and car seats are safe is the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA. If you can't talk to them about it, who can you talk to? No one, I guess. NHTSA said they didn't want to talk about it because they're thinking about doing something about it, as they have been for the last two years.